This message is for the parents. Do you know that your parents typically determine your social economic class? And one of the things that I'm seeing with society is that many people are trying to escape to the low rent district, which creates all kinds of problems. One of the things that you have got to understand is let's take in the realm of dating. And this is really, really huge. There are women that will not take you serious as a long-term romantic partner unless you have a college degree. Now, I have been able to kind of sort of typically get around that because I'm an intellectual. I like to read and I like to study, but I have been flat out told by women that, you know, you're cool to hang around with, but you don't have a degree. So I can't take you serious. And that's a very real thing. And one of the things that is happening as um, we move into what I want to classify as hood rat shit. Um, upward economic mobility was essentially destroyed when we got rid of manufacturing starting in the late sixties and early seventies. And what I am seeing, cause uh, this week I did some research. They have tick tock houses in California. These are houses where a bunch of people who are doing tick tock live and perform skits. And then we have this huge, huge gig economy, Uber, DoorDash, and these people, you know, have never had a regular job. And, you know, I'll speak on that from the perspective of, a, of an employer. Recently, I posted a job, you know, and this would be something that we will cover in the program. And I got a bunch of applicants, but none of the applicants were qualified. None of the applicants were qualified. So this was my process. I literally took the ad down and then I um, decided to write another one. And this cost me $1,050 just to do this process because, you know, indeed charges you per the number of candidates who respond to your ad. So I had a whole bunch of people respond to my ad that were unqualified. And this is part of the hood rat shit because I have a friend named David Dinkins and we had a conversation today because I was asking him why do I have so many people who are unqualified because you know once again going through the Craigslist marketing system going through the Craigslist protocols I know from experience the better your ad is the better results you would get so we're just going to consider that first ad garbage. We're just going to consider that garbage. And it was a garbage ad and I was getting garbage responses because this is something that I noticed. None of these people there, I had one person out of the applicants that I scanned because at one point I just got very frustrated and I started canceling uh, video interviews and um, these people have not had a job I mean, it was like every year they were getting a new job. And one of the things that I want, like, let me go ahead and tell you about me. When I was in high school, I worked at sign builders and then I went to the military. And when I came out the military and I would apply for jobs, the only work experience I had was the military. And up until about 1997, I had the military, Northside Hospital, Scottish Rite, Cobb General Hospital. Those were the only jobs that I had. And I worked at Northside Hospital for seven years. And one of the things, I, and there was one person who had worked a job for four years. 
And this is something that I'm looking for. I'm not looking to have a revolving door. I'm looking to get people who are going to come, who are going to stay, who are going to work. And from a cultural standpoint, you got people who are not, um, they're not built for that. They're not built for that. And it is the 7th of July. And I'm here to tell you why you want to get into the program or intellectual property school. One of the things I've been doing is looking at, you don't have as much time as you think you do to make your mark. And if you're 30 or 40 years old, the amount of time you have to actually do something significant with your life is going away because let's say you're 45. In 15 years, you're gonna be 60. Doesn't sound like the 15 years is gonna fly by. And what you need to do is start working on your future today. In the intellectual property school, I'm gonna give you things like uh, one of the things that's going to start happening next week in the intellectual property group we're going to have challenges and we're going to be working with people on their youtube channels and their ideals and stuff we're going to have challenges i'm in the process of trying to hire a student proctor which is being very very interesting um so what you want to do and i'm going to give you the blueprint you want to get into home economics because that's included in the program of the intellectual property school you want to get in there and you want to straighten out your finances then optimize your finances. And then we're gonna get into some training this month that's gonna give you significant tax advantages. And we're going to start developing this because here's the thing, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is gonna take time for you to put together. You're not gonna be able to do this in 30 or 60 days. It ain't, it ain't happening. But I want you to think in terms of three years. This year is the establishment year. Next year is the year that you really start to get into it. And your third year is when you blow up. Cause that's what happened to me. My first year I made 62,000. My second year I made 92,000. My third year I made 1.5 million. And I had business experience. And what I'm going to give you is a serious shortcut shortcut to your learning curve. Because I'm going to teach you so many things. Like every day on YouTube, I see people who are doing stuff that is literally killing their success on YouTube. Literally killing their success. So go ahead. Stop wasting time. Because time is the only luxury we have per Kanye West. Stop wasting time and go ahead and enroll in the program, which includes the Intellectual Property School or the Intellectual Property School by itself. Because as we go along, this thing is going to get really, really deep. And right now you have time to get in, go through home economics, and then you have time to start doing the first lessons of the intellectual property school. Because once again, this stuff takes time. You're not going to be able to snap your fingers and do it. And you're looking at six to 12 months before you start making money. Just to be honest with you. However, I started making money in 2009, October, so October, 2009. And I've not stopped making money since, and it's 2022. So just to give you a potential, uh, some insights on what is possible. So go ahead, hit that first comment or hit the description and enroll in the program or intellectual property school today. I, I mean, it's, it's really, really surprising because from an advantage point of being an employer and serving the um, workers market, it is not good. It is not good because uh, let me tell you what I came away with, because once again, and this is something that I cover in the program because hiring will be covered. I've been through this before, and this is what we're going to have to do. First thing was a trial run. We spend $1,050 as a trial run. We'll do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm writing another ad with particular qualifications, because once again, it's been a while since I've hired someone, and I have to make sure because this is gonna cost me money that I have to get certain requirements met before they start applying for the job. And I put it up in, actually, let me read something to you. All right. We're looking for a person who wants a career in a long-term position. Older people are encouraged to apply. Great time management skills are required. Plus you must have office and sales experience on your resume preferably two years minimum and we're about to go five years five years would be ideal now what i'm going to do is while i'm because <clears throat> like i said i got this up i'm going to think about it and i'm not going to post it tomorrow i'm going to post it monday i'm going to post it monday morning maybe Sunday afternoon because um, one of the things that I am looking for is to create a culture, a corporate culture of having people come to work 
and stay and already know and it's very much like the dating market very much like the dating market finding a good match is challenging it is challenging but once again i've learned from the craigslist marketing system i learned from the craigslist protocols that i have to write better ads and if you've noticed i have gotten back into copywriting because i've been posting in the community section and some of you are really enjoying that so i I'm, thank you for the feedback i appreciate that but from a cultural standpoint the classes the separation between classes is more pronounced than ever i mean you know once again you you if as a parent you know and this is a message from me to you to you as a parent you are determining your children's social economic class you are the, the number one factor in the net determination are you upper middle class income because if you're upper middle class income that gives your children a substantial advantage now if you're poor you're a single mother you're barely making it let me tell you what you're giving to your children all of those struggles trials and tribulations that you're going through your children are inheriting they're inheriting that so you think that you're going through the long you think you're a good mom you know you you keep your kid you keep your kids clean you make you feed them and you have a nice decent place maybe not the best place but you you got a decent place you're working hard you're doing everything you can to hold it together let me tell you the legacy that you are leaving for your children. I understand that you're working as hard as you can. You're a good woman. You don't bring strange men to your household. Your kids are not seeing all these uncles and stuff in the morning. And let, let me just go ahead and give you the roadmap that you're leaving for your children. I will start off with my mother. My mother, I never woke up and saw some strange man in the house. Never happened. Uh, my mother was hardworking. Between my mother and grandmother, we had a stable childhood. And for some reason, I am the only one to escape because both of my siblings have defaulted back to um, that situation. Because what happens is you're not exposed to other perspectives. And what's going to happen, once again, single mother, I'm not trying to knock you. I'm not trying to say you're doing a bad job. I'm just trying to create a conversation of understanding that because you yourself have not elevated you're not teaching your children how to elevate and they will listen to what you say but their behavior is going to mirror your behavior this is why typically the social economic class that you're born into is the one that you will die in because the gravity of having such a non-eventful upbringing is pretty much going to determine your kid's social economic class for life so once again like i said i'm not trying to knock you as a single mother i'm not trying to say you're doing a bad job i'm trying to create a conversation that what you need to do, if this is you, is you need to work hard to elevate yourself because what you're doing, the way you're living, is the legacy that you would leave for your children. This is the legacy that you would leave for your children. And it's not good. It's just not good. And once again, I'm not trying to knock you. I'm not trying to say you, because you're, you're unaware. 
you're unaware because I have done the research and I've done the studying and I'll take you because what happens is, and this is something that a lot of MGTO and red pill men never bring up that when you're in the dating market, whether you've gone to college, you've educated yourself or you have money is a huge, huge deal. And they bring it up in the pejorative as it's a negative. All these women want our money. And part of the problem is we have a huge segment of society that is not trying to elevate. And part of it is they don't know they're They don't really understand the consequences because I was watching the documentary of people who went to prison and I was watching these young men who went to prison for 15, 20 and 30 years. That's an incredibly long time. I have been an entrepreneur for 24 years. I am 55 years of age. The point I'm trying to make, you don't have as much time as you think you do. You've got a window. You have a window to make your mark in the world because one of the things like I'm somewhat of a different animal because I found my jam, so to speak. Uh, I'm very good at what I do and I really enjoy it and I love helping people. So for me, I have created a career that I can do until I'm 80 because it's, it's, a, it's a low stress situation. It's not like working in a warehouse or driving a truck. There is no physical rigor to what I do. Uh, it's mostly mental. Like I have days where I am seriously mentally tired, where I have to take a nap because from a mental standpoint, I am completely wiped out and I take a nap, drink a little coffee, then I'm fine. It's not the same as working a 12 hour shift in the Amazon warehouse. It, it, it's, it's, it is so different. And there are many people who are watching and I will include myself because I'm part of the social media landscape. People are sitting here, they're watching me. Uh, my boy, David and I had this conversation. I drive a Porsche, BMW, I live a very nice lifestyle and people are looking and they know it is possible. I am proof that it is possible. But here is where the, the train goes off the tracks. Time. I've been working on this, let's say, I got here 2009, 2012. 2012 is when I arrived, that was the, the big year. And since, so for 10 years, I've been living like this. So that meant that at the age of 45, let me think, because I, I got to think about it, because how old was I in 2012? It's 2022. I will be 56 this year. So that's a 10 year window. So I was probably 44. And from the age of 44 to the age of 55, I've been living this magnificent lifestyle where I don't have to worry about. I don't have normal worries. I don't worry about bills and car payments and I don't even worry about that stuff. That stuff is not even part of my landscape and people see that there's proof of that. But the thing that they miss is it took me time to get here. Um, when I was in the storage auction business, that business did not make me a millionaire. It gave me a really high income, but it gave me, but it was a, I essentially created a job for myself. And when I got my partner was diagnosed with colon cancer stage four, I got sick. We had to shut the business down and that ended the money train. And then this is what I mean by I have a career. And this is the difference between 
a career and a job. And let me read to you. We're looking for a person who wants a career in a long-term position. I have a career. I have a career that I've been doing since 2009. That is a career. I don't have a job. I have a career and with a career, you can advance, you can elevate. And instead of going out and getting a job or looking for a hustle, you need to figure out what's your career. Cause like with the TikTokers and the YouTubers and the Instagram, these guys have very short careers. Uh, I've looked at like, I looked at the number of people who used to be on YouTube who are gone because I can tell you, remember what I said, this isn't a physically rigorous job, but from a mental standpoint, especially if you are a trending influencer, you're always thinking, you're always hustling. You're always thinking the next ideal, the next video, and it becomes a relentless grind. Like one of the things, if you've noticed is I'm going back to posting the video every other day. And what's going to happen is my views are going to go down. I already know this because I've been through it before, but from a mental health standpoint, I got to pace myself and in my career, because, you know, like I said, I'm 55 years of age and honestly, 10 years from now, I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't know that this was going to happen. You know, I have plans, I have goals and stuff, but I don't really know what's going to happen. And when I get 65, I may say, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to kick back. I just want to travel. I just want to enjoy my wife. That may happen. So knowing that I have a 10 year window, I got things to do. To give myself, because at 65, I might be waking up as like, hey, I want to do this until I'm 80. But from a social economic standpoint, people do not understand the ramifications of the choices that they make and their long term, far reaching consequences. They have no clue to how long that this is going to deeply impact their life. Let's talk about you don't have as long as you think you do. One of the things that people do because they don't have an understanding of time, because your life is in 10 year windows. There's your twenties, there's your thirties, there's your forties, and there are your fifties. And each segment is very, very different. Um, I am not the person that I was in my thirties. I am not the person I was in my forties. And I'm about to say something that may come across as a shock to many of you because you know, of my kinky freaky ways and I'm in a relationship and I see myself getting married and I'm not going to have an alternative relationship. What this means is me and my wife are going to be having threesomes or we're going to be swinging that will not be included in my relationship and not because once again, I know what can happen once you introduce those things into your relationship and it's, it can be very problematic. So one of the things that I did, because I understand time and most folks do not understand time. Most people feel that they have way more time than they do. And this is some advice for you in your twenties, you should be building but most people, they go to college, they get out of college, they start going to parties, they start taking vacations, they hang out and they spend their 20s uh, dating and enjoying each other, you know, the opposite sex. That is the wrong way to go because once you leave your 20s, your 30s get very different. I remember at the age of 37, I woke up and I had a pain in my leg and I didn't do anything to hurt myself. So at that point, your body, things start to change. And I know it is very appealing to want to play, to want to have fun, to want to take trips. But 
in your 20s, you should be building. Because let me go ahead and give you the roadmap. At say the age of 25, you decide to start a business. And it takes you until 30 to get the business where you want it to be. So this means from the age 30 until you die, your life is going to be radically different. And this is one of the things I want to impress upon you in terms of class. I'm going to share a story with you that's going to blow your mind. Years and years ago, McDonald's had a program where if you were a hardworking black person, it was aimed at black folks. McDonald's would set you up with a McDonald's. They would pay all of the cost. And my mother had an opportunity to own a McDonald's, but she got scared and she didn't do it. Man, I was pissed. I was like, we could have had McDonald's every day. What? What? I was pissed. I was like, what? And I didn't understand that me being pissed was actually justified. Because if my mother had entered in that program and became a McDonald's franchise, a franchise owner, she would have changed our social class. And what happened was I had to enter a rigorous program of self-education, self-improvement to change my social class. Because statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. Statistically, I should be about 350 pounds. I should have married someone that I went to high school with. We would have 3.5 kids. We would have a crappy house in Birmingham, Alabama. And every Sunday we would get up and put on the church clothes and go to church and be part of the Sunday chicken dinner. That was the legacy that was set up for me, but what I did is I had an intervention and my intervention period was me being homeless because that was the path that I was on. That was the path I was on. And from a social economic standpoint, hear me and hear me well, that when you do not elevate, like once again, as a single man, you need to follow the four mandates. Number one, get your economics together. Number two, get your body together. Number three, get your mental together. Number four, date submissive women. And once you do that, you're going to be in a better situation. And if you get someone pregnant, I remember one of my students, he was in the army. He had saved $50,000. He had good credit. And he got out the army, came back, was working on his business. And then he got someone pregnant. And then his mother and sister moved in with him. The weight of those decisions impeded his progress. I don't really know what happened to him. I just know that he had to stop doing what he was doing. He had to go out and get a job because he had to support people. And this is one of the reasons that I emphasize that you should be building in your 20s versus playing around. Because like my situation, um, if I get my girlfriend pregnant, it's not a problem. That child is going to be a millionaire. It's not a problem because I've done the work of establishing myself. But I didn't understand until I get turned 55 how short these windows are. You do not have as much time as you think you do because when you're 20, because this, this is one of the things that's going to happen to you as you get older. As you become older, time speeds up. Remember when you were a kid and it literally took forever for Christmas to come? When you're 40, Christmas be rolling around like, dang, Christmas here already. The older you come, the faster the time moves because your perspective has changed. And in 
four years and three months, I will be 60. That is coming quicker than I think. It's going to be here before I know it. And I've been sitting here, and this is one of the reasons I decided to um, change my ways. Because the lifestyle that I was leading um, wasn't going to get me what I needed going forward. And what I mean by that, like all this freaky, kinky stuff, I was in a position where it didn't impede my economics. I never allowed my escapades to trample in on my economics. You know, if a girl wanted to have sex in the middle of the day and I had to work, I would tell her no. So that never happened. But what I do see happen is I developed uh, certain attributes that were not conducive to a long-term relationship. And one of the things that happened, because uh, I'm going to do some men's training probably next month. I've had so many women fall in love with me and I figured out exactly how that happened. And that will be included in the training. And one of the things that I look at, because I didn't know all this stuff. I had no clue. I was just like you. That if someone had given me this information when I was 20, and more importantly, if I had listened, I would have started building at the age of 22 versus 32. Fortunately for me, I started building when I was still relatively young. 32, you know, that was 20, 23, 24 years ago. So I was still relatively young. But here we have a situation from a social economic class, because I'm going to go on about the hood rat shit in a minute. But time is so important. Time is so fleeting. To quote Kanye West, time is the only luxury that we have. It's true. Time is the only luxury that we have. And many people waste a tremendous amount of time. They waste so much time when they um, go out here and do this hood rat shit. They waste an incredible amount of time doing hood rat shit. All right, with the hood rat shit. My girl has COVID. And uh, she's she's going to be fine. No hospital, nothing like that. No fever. And she's out running some errands and stuff. And she sent me a picture of her Uber driver who's from New York, New York. And he had a neck tattoo. Neck tattoos are hood rat shit. You will never see a person with a certain social pedigree with a neck tattoo. Now, there are people with neck tattoos who've become rich, but these people from a social economic class, they, they've got the money, but they don't have the pedigree. They don't have the education. Cardi B is a prime example. Cardi B is rich, but she would be shunned by people who grew up with that middle class, upper middle class pedigree. They would not... They may have hire her to sing in a party or something like that, but they would never befriend her or bring her in the inner circle. She will not get invited to the yacht parties because even though she is rich, she has no social economic pedigree. And this is the preponderance of hood rat shit because what people see because like, go ahead and do some Googling and you will see that 72% of high school school graduates want to be YouTubers and TikTokers. They don't want a career. They don't want to be a fireman or a policeman. They want to be YouTubers or TikTokers because they don't know. They don't know the hard work that goes into being a successful YouTuber and TikToker. I remember I was at a nice restaurant and there was this girl who was clearly taking pictures for Instagram and she had her friends. They literally spent 
30 minutes taking pictures, taking different angles, different shots to get that one shot. And this is one of the things I will say virtually any social media influencer, whether it's YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, if they've got a certain amount of followers, they work hard. And that's one of the things that uh, creates a problem for people with the preponderance of hood rat shit. People who are with that hood rat shit angle don't have a work ethic. They don't have a work ethic, man. And it shows because like when I put up this ad and I got all these people, I saw a lot of hood rat shit. And because of the preponderance of social media, hood rat shit is very appealing. It's very appealing. You get the money, you get the women, you get to smoke weed all day. Who don't want that? And you don't have to be working for the man. You're doing your thing. You're living your life. But see, here's something that's funny. Do a Google search of old pimps. Pimps are the epitome of hood rat shit. And you will see there's this pimp who was like 60 years old. Because once again, you got these 10 year windows. And when you're 60 years old, you're not gonna act like you will when you're 20 or 30. You're just not. You could be in good shape, you could still look good. But what this pimp did is he got married. Because here's the thing, and this is something that I used to see a lot when I was a kid. I used to go visit old people all the time as a kid. And one of the saddest things, because as I remember it, leaving was so hard because these old people were so lonely. They were so lonely. And I would like, I'd be walking out and I'd be trying to leave and take me 10, me 10 minutes to leave because they didn't want me to go. Because companionship, let's go ahead and take sex out the equation. Betty White lived to be 99 years old. She was 17 days from being 100, but when she died. And on her deathbed, she mentioned, she mothered the words, Alan, who was her husband who had died from cancer. So when you get old, you don't want sex. You want companionship. You want someone to be around. And this is one of the reasons that I decided to change my ways when I can still pull. Because, like I said, four and a half years from now, I'm going to be 60 years old. And even if I still look good, I'm going to be 60. All right. Any way you look at it, 60 years old is not the new 22. It's not the new 22. It's not the new 30. 60 is 60 years old. And I'm like, all right, this is going to happen. And what I plan on it because once again i'm planning on it i'm gonna be married i'm gonna have a wife because <sighs> confession time fucking a lot of hoes is fun it is fun but when you move into a later stage of life shout out to Alan Roger Curry. I know exactly why he got married. I know exactly why he got married. Because Alan is going to be 60 next year. And when you get to be that age, family becomes extremely important. Extremely important. And with the preponderance of hood rat shit, we have created people who don't know how to build families, who don't know how to have relationships, who don't know how to be married because of hood rat shit, because hood rat shit is a package that is marketed to people as the ultimate life. I saw a comment. I don't want to work. Working is for serfs and something else. And, you know, I, I'm on government. I'm on food stamps and I get money. 
at some point that's gonna get old that's gonna get real old because one of the things that i looked at and i learned from working in the hospital is people tend to regret the things that they didn't do more so than the transgressions that they committed so once again you know i, I actually thought about this um it's like okay you're getting older you can still pull you can still get a lot of women so what you got to do is make a choice what you got to do is put together something that's going to be everlasting and one of the things i started to do and this is going to blow your mind because it still works and this is going to be part of the masculine course um matter of fact let me show you uh let's see all right i don't know if you can see that but what one of the things i started to do I went back in time whenever me and my girl get busy i've got all these playlist class called fucking music four fucking music two three and i play them when we're getting busy because it creates a different atmosphere she don't feel that i'm just knocking it out the park she feels like i'm making love to her and this ingratiates her to me. So I went old school. I went old school because once again, whether you're prepared or not, the future is coming. The future is coming. And I am preparing for the future that I want because life is a series of trade-offs. With these trade-offs, um, you have to give up certain things to get certain things. And one of the things, let, let me, let me see if I can pull this up. This going to kind of blow your minds. I had to give that up to get what I wanted. That is titties and ass, beautiful face, but I was unfulfilled with her. I was unfulfilled and I knew it because in my Art of Profit podcast, I have an episode that talks about that, why entrepreneurs need to date regular women. And for me to get what I wanted, and once again, it's about happiness, I had to let that go. And once again, she's a beautiful girl. Whenever we go people go places, people literally stop and stare at her. Other chicks be hating on her. And you know, since she has been gone, I haven't really thought about her, which kind of tells me where I was with her. And once again, prepping for the future, prepping for um, the future, looking at the next 10 years. And I'm gonna be straight up. I don't wanna be alone. I do not wanna be alone. There is a certain female YouTuber who will be alone as hell. I can guarantee it. Um, but to not be alone in the future depends upon the decisions that I make today. Because this is where so many people are going wrong. When they get ready for a relationship, they get ready after their pulling powers have waned. I have a friend who is very beautiful, but she's 56 years old. 
and guys don't holler at her because she's 56 years old even though she looks good the way that she dresses lets you know that she's old because see this is them that you know uh i've noticed that typically when women get in her 30s they stop wearing high heels you know how many women i've dated that i had to buy some high heels because they didn't have any in their closet this typically happens in their 30s see what happens is the way that you dress in your 40s and 50s it's way different than the way you dressed in your 20s and 30s. So even though she looks good, guys know she old. And they like, I ain't trying to holler at that. And Because one day she was just like, I don't get as many dating opportunities as I used to. And I was like, because you old. <laughs> She's like, what? I said, you're 56 years old. They expect you to be grandma. And she looked at me with so much hate. <laughs> I mean, it was just crazy. But... Yeah, man, one of the things that you have got to do is start understanding that you do not have forever and time is moving quicker than you know. And a lot of people waste a lot of time and next thing you know, they're 60 years old living in a van. Someone called the Dave Ramsey show. Her husband wants to sell a house, buy a van, and live in a van. In the future, van life is going to be a normal part of the American fabric. There are going to be, I, I found another one today, this chick's living in her SUV. You're going to have a ton of people living in cars, living in vans. You know, living in an RV is going to be like middle class van life. It's going to be middle class. It's going to be upper middle class van life. And, uh, it's going to be a very big part of, of the fabric, but yeah, man, it's about to get deep and I'm going to be here for it. I'm going to be here for it. Okay. It is the 7th of July and I'm here to tell you why you want to get into the program or intellectual property school one of the things i've been doing is looking at you don't have as much time as you think you do to make your mark and if you're 30 or 40 years old the amount of time you have to actually do something significant with your life is going away because let's say you're 45 in 15 years you're going to be 60 doesn't sound like the 15 years is going to fly by and what you need to do is start working on your future today. In the intellectual property school, I'm going to give you things like uh, one of the things that's going to start happening next week in the intellectual property group, we're going to have challenges and we're going to be working with people on their YouTube channels and their ideals and stuff. We're going to have challenges. I'm in the process of trying to hire a student proctor, which is being very, very interesting. Um, so what you want to do, and I'm going to give you the blueprint. You want to get into home economics because that's included in the program or the intellectual property school. You want to get in there and you want to straighten out your finances, then optimize your finances. And then we're going to get into some training this month. That's going to give you significant tax advantages. And we're going to start developing this because here's the thing. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is going to take time for you to put together. You're not going to be able to do this in 30 or 60 days. It ain't, it ain't happening. But I want you to think in terms of three years. This year is the establishment year. Next year is the year that you really start to get into it. And your third year is when you blow up. Because that's what happened to me. My first year, I made 62000 My second year, I made 92000 my third year I made 1.5 million and I had business experience. And what I'm going to give you is a serious shortcut, shortcut to your learning curve. Cause I'm going to teach you so many things like every day on YouTube, I see people who are doing stuff that is literally killing their success on YouTube, literally killing their success. So go ahead, stop wasting time. Cause time is the only luxury we have per Kanye West. Stop wasting time and go ahead and enroll in 
the program, which includes the intellectual property school or the intellectual property school by itself, because as we go along, this thing is going to get really, really deep. And right now you have time to get in, go through home economics, and then you have time to start doing the first lessons of the intellectual property school. Because once again, this stuff takes time. You're not going to be able to snap your fingers and do it. And you're looking at six to 12 months before you start making money. Just to be honest with you. However, I started making money in 2009, October, so October 2009. And I've not stopped making money since, and it's 2022. So just to give you a potential, uh, some insights on what is possible. So go ahead, hit that first comment or hit the description and enroll in the program or intellectual property school today.